Today, I am going to tell you about computer memory and its resemblance with human memory. Sounds great. Hello and welcome back to our channel Power Souls, The Evil Gods. I am Harshita and I am Sana. This is the fourth video of the easy to understand series of all about computers. In the previous video, we discussed the computer processor. If you haven't watched it yet, I would strongly recommend you to watch it. The link for the previous video is given in the description below. In today's video, we are going to understand computer memory and its resemblance with human memory from Sana. Computer memory is a huge topic. Today, I will explain why a computer needs memory and its type such as primary and secondary memory. In the next video, we will discuss how to calculate computer storage. And make sure to watch the video till the end because today I will tell you tips on how to turn your slow computer into a faster computer. Okay, so as always, let's start with a basic question. How do you remember names or numbers? I repeat them multiple times to remember them. Hmm, that's fine for a small collection. But if you have very large data such as a dictionary or a phone book, how would you remember that? Why should I remember a dictionary? I can always refer to it whenever I need to search for a word. Exactly. Similar to us, computers also work in this way. Do you mean computers also buy heart like us and refer to books? No, they do not memorize like us or refer to books like us. However, they also store information in two types of memory, primary memory and secondary memory. What is that? I have never used primary memory or secondary memory. Let me explain. Primary memory or main memory is the one which is very fast but limited in storage space. For humans, we can consider brain memory as primary memory. In computers, the primary memory consists of RAM chips. I think you're right. We can remember and recall small words and numbers quite easily from our brain. But we have difficulty in remembering large words, names, numbers and other such information. So, what is the solution for that? Solution is secondary memory. It is made to store large information, but it is lower in comparison to primary memory. It's like notebooks, where we can write anything and refer to it whenever required. In a computer, the secondary memory devices are hard disk, pen drive, or CD, DVDs, etc. Okay, what are the examples of primary memory in a computer? In a computer, the primary memory is made up of RAM and ROM chips. RAM or random access memory is a type of memory which allows to access the information directly without following a sequence. Because of direct access, the time spent to find information is quite fast and seen for all the data. A computer uses RAM chips as its primary memory. Can you explain random access memory with some examples? Okay, let's think of a dictionary. To search a word in a dictionary, you do not go page by page looking for a word. You directly jump to the letter and find that word. So, in a dictionary, you can search for any word in almost the same amount of time. So, we can say that a dictionary is a type of RAM memory. RAM, a random access memory, gives very fast access to the computer for all its data in the memory. The opposite of random access memory is sequential memory. Okay, can you also give an example of sequential memory? Yes, think of searching for a word in a book. In this case, you will start from the first page and keep on matching every word in the page with the searched word. In this example, we are searching the word sequentially on every page. So, this is a sequential search. If we are lucky and find the word on the first line of the first page itself, the 
then the search time would be very very less. On the other hand, if the word is on the last page of the book, it may take very long to find this word, depending on the number of pages in a book. So, a book is an example of sequential memory. In a computer, the examples of sequential memory are tape drives. Due to the slow access nature, sequential memory is not considered as primary memory. Hmm, I got it. RAM is a primary memory due to the faster access property. Now let's talk about ROM. ROM or read-only memory is a type of memory which cannot be modified by the computer or the user. Information such as serial number, model name and other important information which is required by the computer but which should not be modified by the user is stored in ROM. Such important information is written in a ROM memory during the computer manufacturing process. Once written, it can be used by a computer but cannot be modified. It's like engraving something on a stone. You can read it but can't erase or modify it. Hmm, that means ROM is mostly for a computer's own usage and it's not for storing our data such as files, right? Yes, you are right. ROM is not for storing user data as we can't write in ROM. And you will be surprised to know that even RAM is not used to store user data. For storing user data and files, computers use secondary memory such as hard disk. This is because the data inside RAM is lost when you power off a computer. Really? Isn't it strange that the data inside the RAM is lost after power loss? No, it's perfectly fine because RAM is not meant to store user data. RAM works as an intermediate memory store to quickly provide data to the processor. So, the real task of the RAM is to load data from secondary storage or hard disk and give it to the CPU whenever required. Can you explain this with an example? Of course. Once again, consider your brain as RAM and your books as secondary storage. Now, think of the exam time. During the exam, you put a lot of information in your brain from the books. You generally keep this information in your brain till you write the exam. After the exams are over, your brain automatically removes a lot of this information. So, in this case, your brain is behaving like RAM or temporary storage. Hmm. So, RAM is holding information till the time it is required by the CPU. Once it is not required, it is removed from the memory. But tell me, what happens if the CPU asks for the info and it is not available in the RAM? First, you tell me what will happen if your teacher asks you about a question which you forgot after the exam. I am smart. I will refer to the book and answer it. Exactly. The same happens in the case of a computer. If RAM does not have the data asked by the CPU, then this data is loaded into RAM from secondary memory, such as hard disk. After loading, this data is provided to the CPU by RAM. And what if the RAM is already filled with data? What will happen then? If the RAM is already filled, first the less important data is removed to make space for the new one. However, the erasing and data copy process takes time. That's why a computer with small RAM will perform poorly in comparison to a computer with higher RAM. That's all for today's video. Before leaving, here's a pro tip. If your computer is running slowly, increase its RAM to make it faster. Increasing RAM will definitely improve the overall performance. There are many more pro tips which we will reveal in upcoming videos so make sure to subscribe to our channel to get an automatic update on the latest videos before going let's quickly recap today's discussion computers have two types of memories primary memory and secondary memory primary memory is also known as main memory 
It is very fast to read or write, but limited in size. Secondary memory is comparatively slow, but its size can be very huge. The data in secondary memory is not lost even after the computer is powered off. Examples of primary memory are RAM and ROM chips. Examples of secondary memory are hard disk, pen drive, CD, DVD, etc. That's all for today's video. In the next video, we will talk about memory size and its units such as bits and bytes. Thank you for watching us and stay tuned.